Hello everyone and welcome back to a Gran Turismo time trial and oh your eyes are not deceiving you we are at the Le Mans circuit the full circuit in the Bugatti Veyron group 4 car which you can see right there we are on racing hard tires I will say this is a very easy time trial in my opinion but it can be very frustrating with track limits and the bollards in validating laps gold estimate around the 422.3 and I say it's easy because the longer a time trial time is in terms of length the longer the gap is it's still three percent but it grows it's like compound interest essentially same sort of thing now if you do enjoy these videos do subscribe to the channel and do give it a like as well it tells me you do enjoy these guides so let's set off with the Bugatti Veyron first of all short shift the car so I'm shifting at the gear number as you can see when we go to sixth gear there head over towards the left hand side then and then we're going to turn in quite early towards the right using all of the track and as we go into the straight line braking remember always breaking a straight line we break at that total sign on the right hand side as I say make sure you're breaking a straight line this car is a very heavy car if you break while you're turning you're going to literally cause some weight transfer so you can see where that is in terms of chase cam as we go on the brakes so we want to cut all of the inside as much as we can and then we want to cut this one as well now I've just stopped it here to show you track limits the blue and yellow curbing counts as track limits here on the chicane at turn number one or turn two technically so just keep that in mind this car also feels smaller than it actually is it's quite a wide car so do try and abuse it as much as you can you will benefit from that however you probably don't need to do it too much if you just have to that gold time head towards this left hander then on the right hand side you've got the tannoy or the lights whatever the heck they are on the right hand side as that gets close to the edge of your screen you're going to hit the brakes you can see here i have just started the hitting the brakes there and that is it's in chase cam so there's a bit more of a gap there between that post and the edge of your screen and we're going to go on the brakes now i stay in fourth gear for this one i'm trying to keep it tight and i'm a bit patient on the throttle be careful those bollards they will invalidate your lap even if you skim them so do be careful Tetra Rouge then, on the right side, you've got that blue graphic there on the tarmac, okay? So as that starts, I'm going to hit the brakes. Now, you can cut a lot of the inside here, which is then going to help on the exit. If you run too wide, it will invalidate your lap. If you cut too much, it will invalidate, but I feel like you can cut more on the inside because it will understeer than you can on the outside. Now, I don't cut it at all there, and I really should have. So I lost actually three tenths on this lap just from not doing that here. You can see there the extreme, the very, very extreme track limits there. That is the limit in terms of going off there. So it's actually the blue graphic turns into the track limits there with the way it's been drawn onto the circuit. Just keep that in mind as we head down the Mulsanne straight then. As we go down here on the left hand side, the catch fence has just ended. We're looking for those marshals there and we are breaking just after those marshals, in fact. Okay, so it's a very late break in in this Bugatti Veyron Group 4. We're looking for those marshals, as you can see them right here, even easier to spot on the chase cam and we're breaking just after them when we're on the bumper cam now abuse all of the inside here staying on the curbing and then abuse all of the left as well but stay on the curbing now on the exit be very careful on the exit there if you run too wide too early it will invalidate your lap it's something to keep in mind on these chicanes run too wide too early it will invalidate so make sure you keep a nice tight line delay the throttle a little bit if you are struggling with those track limits just to make sure you get the lap done and towards the second chicane then you've got the trees on the right hand side it's the last of the trees if you want to use them and the hundred board you're breaking before the hundred board but at the trees you can see them very clearly there on chase cam it's actually much easier to see on chase cam and we're going to go on the brakes again using all of the inside staying on the curbing and again on the inside here but making sure we don't run too wide on the exit too early. If you run too wide too early, it will invalidate your lap. And I'm going to keep saying that throughout this lap guide. Head down towards Mulsanne Corner then. We're looking for... Actually, we've got two markers here. On the left-hand side, we've got the orange barrier there. It's bang on point, actually, for the Bugatti Veyron. But I'm normally looking for the curb going into the circuit. So where it protrudes most into the circuit. Now, I'm breaking at this point. You can see I've just gone on the brakes right now. Breaking a straight line. So arrow straight now, breaking a straight line towards the outside of the circuit, as you see me do here. I drop to second gear, and then I'm going to use all of the exit. Staying within those curbs, as I keep saying. So we'll leave that corner. Again, we can just relax now and breathe a little bit as we go down this straight. And that's the nice thing about trying to get this gold time. A lot of it is just straight line speed, and everybody can do that. Not a problem. So heading towards Indianapolis, this is a hard corner to get right. You want to break a little bit at this point. You've got the 100 board or the dark green, but it's not really that visible. So maybe the 100 board is going to be better for you here. But there is a dark green patch there in front of you. You're going to break a little bit as you go into this corner. It's to slow the car down initially. As we try and get round and go straight, that's when we're going to go hard on the brakes when we're in a straight line. If you try 100% brake going through that initial right, you're going to spin out. So the catch fence on the right hand side is the marker I use. You can also use that um, escape road there if you want, but the catch fence or 
changing fencing on the right side is far better to use in my opinion as you come into here you want to cut a little bit of the inside but not too much i cut too much here and end up in the gravel there just be careful but it doesn't invalidate your lap so just yeah keep that in mind on the right side, we've got the Gantt sign or the last tree on the right. I use both of these in this time trial, depending on how I feel. But essentially, as I get to that point, I'm going to hit the brakes. Use all of the left-hand side of the circuit, okay? But make sure your right wheels stay in the white line there. And then what we're going to do, drop to second gear, hit the curb and just boot it. This is an all-wheel drive car. It will just grip and it will just go. So keep that in mind when you do the acceleration. That It's not really going to oversteer. Just put your foot down and off you go. Head towards Porsche Curse then. This is where it gets a little bit more interesting. We've got the Goodyear sign or the dark green patch, similar to Indianapolis. Now you're going to hit the brakes. You're going to be looking for around 110 miles an hour when you hit the curb on the inside line. This is going to be a hard target to hit, but it's one I would highly recommend you try and hit. I see I've got 108 there. 110 is perfect. But as you go into this left, short shift to sixth gear and just be careful of the wall okay you can stay in fifth if you want to i then drop to fifth on the left i'm then going to break and drop to fourth on the on this right hander here based on where the grass ends and the tarmac begins there that i've highlighted so the push curve is very interesting if you even graze or breathe on the wall it will invalidate your lap i've been very close to invalidating it and i have done it a couple of times as well so here i'm saying a nice tight line because i want to open up the next corner so i'm sticking towards the right hand side as that white line goes straight, or alternatively, the RMC sign, I've gone to fifth gear now because I just want to turn in and keep the car balanced. You don't need to break for this corner. Highly advise you don't break for this corner. It will cause you some issues going forward. So don't break. Just go into this corner. Slight lift if you need to. You can use all of the inside. Be careful and exit. It will invalidate your lap again if you go over those curves as we then head towards the final chicane. So for this again, we've got lots of barrier change colours on the right hand side. Okay, you see the Armco, dark grey, and it goes into like a medium greyish blue there. That is my brake marker for this corner. Better to brake early for this, the final chicanes, and get them right than try and be so aggressive and invalidate your lap at the end of a four minute lap, which can be very, very frustrating and annoying. So use that colour change there, brake early, and just prepare yourself as you go into here. You can abuse all the curbs again using that blue and yellow curbing as your track limits guide. And as we go into here, I'm braking even earlier than normal. And I'm using that curb as a bit of an, a guide, but I'm braking early here because I'm on a quite good lap. And obviously this is the fastest lap I've done so far. I'm probably going to jump on and get into the 14s because I can definitely do that. I just didn't have time to finish. I've got work today as well. So continue on through there and head towards the line. That's a 4 minute 15.399. 414s are definitely possible. Let's go into a fast lap then. I am going to go through the entire lap, fast forward parts of course, as we head towards turn one. So get over towards the right hand side, use all of the track there. As we go straight, at the total sign, we hit the brakes. We're gonna try and use as much of as we can of the track limits to straighten up this chicane. The straighter you do it, the quicker you'll be through there as we continue on down the hill in towards the right hand. We're gonna look for the post on the right hand side, hit the brakes, in towards the left. Staying in fourth gear, trying to make sure we click the curb there. Be careful of bollards on the exit. They will invalidate your lap. You will suffer some understeers at some times. Just slight lift it will do. Tetra Rouge, the blue graphic on the right. Hit the brakes, turn in. Cut it more than I did there on the inside. It will benefit you so much more. I lost three temps just in Tetra Rouge there. I really did. Fast forward now to the first chicane. We're looking for the marshals there. Just after the marshals, we hit the brakes then. And we're going to abuse all of the inside on the right and then all the inside on the left. And accelerate and just making sure we don't abuse our chat limits too early. If you go too wide too early, you will get chat limits. See a 42 1 basically there. I've been in the 0.8s and 0.7s in sector 2. So that was very frustrating on this lap. Heading towards this next chicane then. Just before the 100 board, we turn in. Again, abusing all of the curbs on the inside. This is where you abuse, okay? Don't try and abuse it on the exit as much. Abuse it on the inside because the track limits are there to be abused at this moment at Le Mans. So do it. Do it, I tell you. Head down towards here where the track protrudes or the orange painted barrier on the left-hand side. We hit the brake. Second gear, arrow straight braking, and then we turn into Mulsanne and accelerate out using all of the track limits, and then we can breathe again. We know we've only got half the lap to go. I use that as a bit of a time reference point just so I know where I'm up to in terms of the lap. We head towards Indianapolis then, and what we're looking for is the 100 board or the dark green patch, break slightly, and then that really strong fence on the right-hand side that you can see. As we turn in, don't cut as much as I did here, really compromise Indianapolis, again, losing another attempt for two there as we continue towards Arnage. Looking for that second Gantt sign, the middle Gantt sign there, or the last of the trees, and we boot it out of here as quick as we can. Not worrying about power over there. This car doesn't suffer from that. You boot it, you go. It weighs a ton. It's just sat on the floor right now. Head towards Porsche Curves then. We're looking for that Goodyear sign or the dark green patch. As we turn into here, I'm trying to maintain 110 miles an hour in fifth gear. I short shift to sixth. I'd advise you do that, but you can do it in fifth as well. It just feels a bit slower to me, but maybe it changes. 
We drop a gear going into the left, and then we're going to hit the brakes as the tarmac starts out and drop another gear down to fourth. And fourth is where we stay. We're going to short shift to fifth as it goes straight, turn left, use the understeer to your advantage. So you're turning in too early, so then you hit the curb perfectly and you can carry on through the corner. Head towards the final chicane then. We are looking for the change in colours. Remember, it's dark grey to the bluish, lighter grey on the right hand side. There it is. We're going to hit the brakes and just, just prepare for these chicanes. Excuse me. Going through here then, look for that curb, breaking a straight line, turn in, try to abuse the track limits where we can and accelerate out. Blue and yellow curves are the track limits. Keep that in mind. And we're not just going to do a fast lap on the bumper camera. We are also going to do it on the chase cam. Of course we are because we always do this. And now you can see the track limits in full effect then. So heading towards turn one. We turn in early here, abusing all of the inside there. At the total sign, we hit the brakes. Look how much I use here into this chicane quite a lot there even more on this one the second part of that chicane is actually better one to cut out the two if you are struggling with track limits the second one seems more lenient for some reason now remember the post on the right hand side is our brake marker for this i'm being very patient in this car letting the car roll a little bit before i go on the throttle to avoid understeer into those bollards because they're just annoying Tetra Rouge, you can cut a lot of the inside, and I don't do it on this lap, which is really annoying. But on the outside, look at this. I use all of the track limits and a little bit more there, but it doesn't invalidate my lap, fortunately. Now we can breathe a little bit as we go down the Mulsanne. Remember, you are short shifting this car as well. As we go down here, we look at those marshals on the left hand side. As we get some on chase cam, we hit the brakes. If you're using the right hand side and the left hand side, staying on the curbs there and then not going too wide on the exit. And breathe once again then and start thinking about the next chicane. Remember what we do here, the next chicane, we're looking for the 100 board and we're breaking just before that, or the last of the trees on the right hand side. Let's use the last of the trees in this situation, there we go, hard on the brakes, we turn in. I get a bit of oversteer there, nothing major, I do catch it as we accelerate through here. Again, I've said it several times now, don't run too wide too early. That is one of my big tips for this one. Don't run too wide too early and you will be fine. Head out towards Mulsanne then, the orange painted barrier or alternatively as the curb protrudes in. We straight line brake all the way to the outside, second gear, turn in, clip the curb and just boot it out because there's no such thing as power oversteer in the Bugatti Veyron. Right, fast forward once again, breathing, thinking about Indianapolis, looking for that brake marker, the 100 or the dark green patch on the left hand side. That's what we're going to look for here, there it is, we're going to hit, we just hit the brakes a little bit, then hard on the brakes then for the second part of Indianapolis. We turn in, we cut a bit too much here, we're going to see how much I go onto the gravel there, and I still don't invalidate the lap. The middle Grant, Gant sign, not Grant, Gant, I don't know what Grant is, a Gant, uh, we hit the brakes and we turn right and accelerate through that corner. So we head towards Porsche Curves. Remember, it's a Goodyear sign. All the dark green patch is very much more obvious on this camera. And as we turn in, we're looking to hit 110 miles an hour. We just go a bit under that on this particular lap. Through the left we go. We clip the curb. We're going to go out and then come back in. Look how close I am to the barrier there. Drop a gear. We're going to hit the brakes and drop another gear. And maintain a very tight line then as we go through here. Keep it nice and tight as it goes straight up to fifth gear. Turn left. There we go. All nice and settled, happy days, and we're going to head towards the chicane. Remember, don't do the chicane too aggressive. You're after gold here, not rank one in the world. So obviously, as I, oh, well, maybe if I do have a go again, I'm not too sure yet, uh, I will be pushing the limits. You don't have to do that. Dark grey to the bluish grey, break, and just prepare yourself for this. Just be settled through here, okay? We cut a little bit at the left, cut a little bit at the right. We accelerate towards the line, and that is a lap here at Le Mans in the Bugatti Veyron Group Plus. It's a shame we don't have the Bugatti circuit because the Bugatti at the Bugatti layout would have been quite good to be honest with you but hey here we are we don't have that. So there we are the Bugatti Veyron Group 4 at Le Mans. Quite interesting that we don't use the Veyron too often so I can kind of see why we're using it and it's an easy time trial in my opinion. I'm sorry if you don't find it easy that's just my opinion and that's what I'm going to say about it. You've got a big gap there to close it's like eight seconds. If you did enjoy this video do give it a like do subscribe to the channel I appreciate all the support but that is going to be it for this video. Last week's guide is there for you if you are struggling at Red Bull Ring in the Evo. Alternatively, another video there for you as well. And if you're struggling to find a subscribe button, just click that logo right in the middle. A big thank you for watching as always, and I hope to see you in another video. I'll live stream again very soon.